Hola. Hola. Bienvenidos a Lightspeed Spanish. Bienvenidos. So this week we have a test for you and it's a test of ser, estar and haber. And this is set at a roundabout level A1 to A2. Exactly. To But I mean, any level could take it just Absolutely. for practice. There's no sake. limit. If you see two, still do it <laughs> because you never know. Así Eso. que... And, and probably some Spanish people... And if you're Spanish, do it we, as well. Let's we'll take it as well. Absolutely. Just to test themselves. <laughs> Loads of Spanish people do the test as well. Just to, It's true. Just to make themselves feel good. Like, I finally passed the yeah. test with 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, entonces hablamos de todo en la segunda parte. Y si te gusta este contenido, por favor, dale a like y suscríbete porque es gratis y nos ayuda mucho. Excellent, correct. And also, this is a, a, just a test and it's in a, sort of a basic level. In a few weeks, we'll be producing a Ser Socio, where that's our subscriber uh, group, and we'll be doing explaining the grammar and also doing a test that's a, that's a bit higher than that. So if you like that sort of thing, you can always try Ser Socio freely for a month. You don't have to pay anything. Just try it and see whether you like it. Okay, so this is a 12-question test. Uh -oh. um, so I give you the three options. So one option with the verb ser, another one with estar, and another one with the verb haber. And then you pick the one you think is correct. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, so you'll be so I'm the, the guinea student. Pig, yeah? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, Gordon, so you pick the one you think is correct. Okay, yeah? okay. Frase numero uno. I've got to get these right, eh? Because it's A1 level. If I get, if I get them wrong, it's going to be a problem. We'll cut it out. <laughs> Frase número uno. Yo soy, estoy, hay, estudiante de español. Mm. Ok, en eso. Yo soy. Ok, yo soy. So, why soy? Well, we use ser when we talk about uh, our characteristics. So if you're a Spanish student, we use ser. Yeah, we're not talking about a state, we're talking about a characteristic. Exactly. And something different in English and Spanish is that in Spanish you don't need to say a student. Yeah. Uh, in Spanish you say I am student. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So yo soy estudiante de español. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Número dos. Sandra es... Está, I. It doesn't matter if it looks because nothing is marked. No, there's no answers there. So there's no answers, or so he's not peeking. <laughs> I can't peek. Me lo ha puesto muy difícil. <laughs> Número dos. Sandra es, está, hay, una mujer muy risueña. Okay, so once more I'm going to choose ser. Sandra es una mujer. Okay, so why es? Right, so this is really interesting. In Spanish, in Spanish, when you want to describe somebody, you have to say she is a woman and then whatever. She's a woman happy. She's a woman intelligent. And so when you, if you're saying she's a woman, that's a pretty fixed characteristic. And so we use said. Okay. And in this sentence, you can see that we have Sandra es una. Mujer muy risueña. Now, in this case, we say una because now we're qualifying what kind of exactly. woman he is. And she is a very risueña, how would you say? Like she laughs a lot, jolly, smiles a lot. Jolly. Yeah, mm -hmm. eso es. Mm -hmm. Frase número tres. No es, está, hay nadie para despacharme. Okay, so now I will go for hay. No hay nadie. No hay nadie. Muy bien, para despacharme. Um, why hay? Because we've got... Right, so one of the confusions with hay is that it, it's got this is in it. So you think, well, it might be a ser o estar. Yes. The, the clip is with hay, there's there. Whenever there's there, there is. And it is, isn't there anyone? So it's when you've got a... Is and a there, it's it's a there. Yes, and that, that catches a lot of people out Lots. because we see 
the verb to be, exactly. there is, and yeah. then we go, oh, is, es, or está. Exactly. But it's there is, which is uh, I. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Muy bien. So how would you translate that sentence? No hay nadie para despacharme. Isn't there anyone to despacharme? Despacharme is when you go to the shop and is there anyone to serve me? To serve me. me. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. I'm not familiar with that verb. No? No. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right, so number four. El coche es, está, hay, nuevo. Pero es, está, hay, roto. Okay. So I would say, el coche es nuevo, pero está roto. Mm, okay, so why would it be es nuevo and está roto? Okay, so when when a car is new, it's new. We're talking about mm-hmm. the car. This is a new car. It's mm-hmm. characteristic. Description, yeah. Description. But broken is a state. Exactly. It's not meant to be broken, and mm-hmm. therefore it's outside of the normal. It's what you don't expect. So exactly. we, we use estar. By the way, we have a book. We do. On ser and estar. We have two. Um, so we have this book on ser and estar, and it explains about this, and it also talks about all the tenses with ser and estar. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're interested, maybe Gordon can put the link. I'll put the links. Yeah. However, I'll say, Gordon, what about mm. saying el coche está, está nuevo, full yeah. stop? Could you say that? Yeah, I've heard, está nuevo. I've heard it. I've heard it. I've heard it. What would the difference be between el coche es nuevo and el coche está nuevo? Okay. So when I hear this being used, imagine you get your car and it's 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 a few years old, but you take it to the garage, they do a full service, they clean it, they, they get it beautiful. So when we say, mira, el coche está nuevo, we're talking about the state. It's in the state as if, as if it were new again. Exactly. So it's not new, but... It's the appearance it's, of It new. looks new. Yeah, <laughs> it's in a state, state of newness. <laughs> of newness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Muy bien. Número cinco. Pablo y yo somos, estamos, hay, comprometidos. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So I would go for estamos. Estamos comprometidos. Mm. Muy bien, muy bien. With um, not with this one, but with other marital status, there's no consensus sometimes with, sure. between the speaking, the Spanish speaking community. So, for example, in Spain, um, we we say we tend to say estoy casado or estoy casada, and in Latin uh, the Latin American countries. Uh, where they speak Spanish, they tend to say, soy casado, soy yeah. casada. Yeah. Okay, so both would be correct. It's just, sure. it depends where. Depends on where. W- what's, what Spanish you study, you would go for ser o estar. And the same applies with things like divorciado. Divorciado, the same. Yeah. So, soy divorciada, soy divorciado, o estoy divorciada, estoy divorciado, which is more common in Spain. Here, yeah. yeah. Yes. But with comprometido, I think there's consensus and we would all say, estoy comprometido o comprometida, o mm-hmm. en this case, comprometidos. Número 6. Tu respuesta es, está, hay, mal. Okay, so there's only one option here, mm-hmm. which is, está mal. Está mal, eso es. Está bien, está mal. Yeah, this is, these are mal and bien only go with estar. Eso es. Está bien, está mal. Es bueno, es malo. But also you could say está bueno. bueno está which bueno. is for food or something tasty, mm-hmm. typically. Um, número 7. Tu respuesta es está hay incorrecta. Okay, so I would say, tu respuesta es incorrecta. Yes, tu respuesta es incorrecta. So now we have these two sentences. Tu respuesta está mal, and tu respuesta es incorrecta. Hmm. So, what would it be, es incorrecta? Well, what happens with with going back to mal, mal and bien, these are adverbs. Mm -hmm. And so, the adverbs go with estar. Okay. Okay, but if it's wrong, it's wrong. Eso es. Es correcto, es incorrecto. Mm-hmm. Muy bien. Vale, número 8. This is art, by the way, as well. Eh? You, you, <laughs> you, you, sometimes you think, well, I just, you either know it or you don't know it. <laughs> it's true. Sometimes it's like, 
Yeah. Uh, it rings a bell, doesn't ring a bell. Exactly. And, so and it's, I know it like because I've heard it. I've heard it a lot. Remember that language is is liberally and you get a Bachelor of Arts, you don't get a Bachelor of Science. Language is not science. So sometimes it's just, you can't say, well, it's exactly that because of that. It doesn't work. Exactly, that's true. Número ocho. Es, está, hay una mosca en mi sopa. Okay, so now, there is. So we've got a there, so there's no choice. It's got to be hay. Muy bien. Hay una mosca en mi sopa. Muy bien. Número nueve. Las tiendas son, están, hay, abiertas hoy. Okay, so something that's open is in the state of being open, so we say están abiertas. Número diez. ¿Qué es, está, hay de comer? Ah. Mm. Okay, so this one, because I've heard it a million times, we're in Spain where food is king. ¿Qué hay de comer? ¿Qué hay de comer? Okay, many people, uh, many students tend to say que hay para comer. Para comer. Which is also correct, but I think de comer is very common as well. It's que hay de comer. Absolutely. Que hay de beber. Que, que hay de, de comer. Beber, que hay de comer. Que hay de cenar. Que hay de desayunar. Que hay... Uh -huh. Yeah. Muy bien. Uh, eleven. Nosotros somos, estamos, hay, en el aula nueve. Okay, so, uh, nosotros estamos en el aula nueve. Muy bien, okay. When we talk about location, we use estar, except mm -hmm. for one very small thing, which we'll talk about in ser socio, but typically location, estar. Eso es. And number 12, es, está, hay, algo que podamos hacer. Mm -hmm. mm, here we've got a bit of... Subjunctive. Bit of subjunctive thrown in. The last one. Subjunctive. So, hay algo que podamos hacer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, again, because the, set, the sentence is saying, is there anything that we might be able to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Muy bien. So, hay. Hay algo que podamos hacer? And that hay algo que is a trigger for the subjunctive. Eso es. Also, we have a book on subjunctive. <laughs> we do. I'll put that in the link as well. There's another link there for you. We've got a book on everything. We have a book really. on virtually everything that you can We're think bringing of. out, uh, probably in January, a book that is is uh, Pura Practica. Pura Practica. Pura Practica. Just sentence after sentence after sentence yes, to practice. of practice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you like that, you'll love that book. It's designed for the stalwarts. <laughs> it's designed for those... Uh, who, who are willing to put the word again. <laughs> ok, pues muchas gracias, Gordon, por ser el estudiante modelo. He sacado... Ha sacado un, 10, un, ¿no? un 12. Un 12, un 12 como tu madre, ¿no? Ha sacado un 12. Mi madre sacó un 11. <laughs> y tú has sacado un 12. Has superado... Toma ya. A mi madre. Toma ya, pues muchas gracias, Cintia. A ti. Y gracias a vosotros eh, por estar con nosotros. Y ahora nos vamos. Y nos vemos. Hasta luego. Adiós. Adiós.